Hey, hey, we have reached the end of chapter one here with 1.9 on solving systems of equations in three variables. And so the objective today is to be able to solve linear equations in three variables and use also real world problems and using systems to solve them. And so that falls still under our standard of using systems to represent um, and solve systems. And so we're gonna look at a couple of methods today um, to do this. And we'll look at the first example, and we're going to talk about using substitution or elimination. And it's the same idea as we do in Algebra 1, or even when we did it a few sections ago, to get the variables together to eliminate. And so we're going to use elimination to make a system of two variables. And so when we're doing this, we're going to pick two of the equations, and we want to use elimination. And so I'm going to pick the first and the third equation in this system. And so when we do that, we're going to get 5x plus 3y plus 2z is equal to 2. And x plus 4y plus 2z is equal to 16. Now, to get these to eliminate, we're going to have to do subtraction. And so 5 minus 1 is 4. 3 minus 4 is negative y. That's what cancels. And 2 minus 16 is negative 14. And so we end up with 4x or minus y is equal to negative 14. Now we've got to be able to do this and eliminate also a second time um, with two of the uh, three equations, not the same two obviously, uh, but we also need to eliminate z again. So we can get two equations and two variables. That's the goal, two equations, two variables. And so we're going to use the 2x plus y minus z because we haven't used that one yet equals 5. And I can choose either the first or the last equation. I'm going to go with the last. And so we get x plus 4y plus 2z is equal to 16. Now to do elimination here, I'm going to have to multiply this top line by 2. And so I get 4x plus 2y minus 2z is equal to 10. And x plus 4y plus 2z is equal to 16. And in this case, we'll add these together because our signs are already opposites of one another. And so 4x plus x is 5x. 2y and 4y would give us 6y. And that is equal to, because that part cancels, uh, 26. And so that gives me two equations, two variables, which now leads us back to solving a two system, um, two variable system, which is step two. And so I'm taking, oops, wrong box. Uh, we're going to take this and this and solve this system. Now, you can, again, choose to do elimination. You could choose to do substitution. You could choose any method um, just depending on what you're given. And so writing our two equations. And we'll see that we need to multiply the top line by 6 to get these so that they'll have uh, something to eliminate. So we're going to get 24x minus 6y, uh, 14 times 6, so that's going to be 24, carry the 2, so we get 84, and 5x plus 6y is equal to 26. And so we are adding those together, pay attention to the operations, these cancel by addition, not by subtraction, and so we're going to get 29x is equal to 84 minus 26, so that's an 8, and that's going to be a 5. Um, and so we get 29x is equal to 58. Divide both sides by the 29. 29x is equal to 58. So divide by the 29, and we get that x is equal to 2. So we get the first of our three variables. Um, and so now we can come back to our system. Well, before we even go back to our system, we can come back to this one and solve for the y. And so we're going to go 4 times the 2 minus the y is equal to negative 14. Because, again, we're trying to solve the system of these two equations and two variables. So 8 minus y is equal to negative 14 minus the 8. So that gives us negative y is equal to negative 22. And if we divide by negative 1, we get that y is positive 22. So I've got the x is 2 and y is 22. And so now, knowing those two pieces, I can come back to any of my original three and solve for the third one. 
And so the best one to choose, I'm gonna go with all those that are positive. I like this bottom one here, x plus four y plus two z is equal to 16. So x plus four y plus two z is equal to 16. We plug in the values that we know. So x is two plus four times 22 plus two z is equal to 16. So we get two plus 88 plus 2z is equal to 16, so 90 plus 2z. Subtract the 90. So moving up here, we're going to get 2z is equal to um, negative 74 and divide by the 2. And we get that z is equal to negative 37. And so as we write this out, we're used to writing ordered pairs, but this will be an ordered triplet. And so x, y, z is the order, x, y, and z. And so we're going to get 2, 22, and negative 37. And so really the point of three variable systems is such that we're dealing in space, right? We're dealing with where in a 3D world something would be. And the applications here are immense in terms of um, think like space travel, right? We've got to think about where something is in space, like how do we send man to the moon? You know, how do we put, you know, like SpaceX right now trying to launch their new rockets up there to get to the International Space Station? They've got to think about where things are in a 3D world and how do they intersect them so that, hey, you know, we're sending up this ship to go meet up with the ISS. They've got to coordinate those things. All right, so I'm going to show you a method on example B here. Um, that's called matrices. And you might have seen this before, but if you haven't, I'm gonna show you how it works. But I want you to understand that you don't have to know all the individual steps. Because if you have a graphing calculator, your graphing calculator will do all of this for you. And so I'm gonna show you how it's built. And so what we do is we set up a matrix. And so if you don't know what matrices are, they look like this. It does not look like what was in the movies 20 years ago. Um, and so, we set up each of these columns. This is gonna be our X's, these are our Y's, these are our Z's, and these we call the constant, or sometimes you'll see it with R for result. And then we're gonna do equation one, equation two, and equation three. Now, when we're really doing a matrix, we don't put these labels outside. We understand what each column is. But for purposes of teaching this, I'm putting these labels on the top and on the side that would normally not be there, okay? So again, these are normally not here. Um, when we do matrices. And so my first line was 2, 3, negative 3, and 16. And so where that comes from is the coefficients, including the signs, of each piece. And so my second one, we look at the coefficients, it's all 1s. 1, 1, 1, and negative 3. And then we get 1, negative 2, negative 1, and negative 1. Now, I could show you how to get this matrix reduced. And our goal of this matrix, so, so when we talk about row reducing a matrix, the end goal is for it to look like this. And this is what we call the identity matrix, where it's one, zero, zero, and then the one translates each row. So this is in position one, one, position two, two, position three, three. And then what we get at the end over in our C column, remember we call this the C column, or the R column for result, is we're gonna get three numbers here. And those three numbers will be your X, your Y, and your Z, because this line represents that X is equal to whatever number I have here, and Y is equal to whatever number I have here, and Z is equal to whatever number I have here. And so again, I could show you if you're really interested in how to do row reduced form of matrices, um, but understand that that is not something I'm trying to teach you today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause for a second, I'm going to calculate the answer, I'm gonna talk out how to do it on your calculator. And so the first step is to hit second and matrix, and you'll see a button that's typically labeled MTRX, or it'll have matrix with the I in there. And you'll get a menu that just shows a bunch of letters in brackets. And so we'll just pick the first one, and it's matrix A. And we'll arrow right over to edit. And so we'll hit enter. And then we have to enter in what type of matrix we're doing. And so it's always by the number of rows and the number of columns. Remember, rows will go across, and so there are three rows and there are four columns. And so this is what we call a three by four matrix. And so then we enter in all of the things that we had put into 
our matrix here into the calculator. And so you're going to just enter through all those numbers, putting them all in. And so once we've done that, on that we're going to go back to our home screen. So we're going to hit second and quit. And our matrix has been saved in the computer, in the calculator. And so now we're going to hit second and matrix again. But now we're going to do error over once to math. And we've got to tell it what math property we want to use. And the one you're going to go down to is R, let me use a pen, um, R, oh my goodness. It's the day of errors as I do this one. R, R, E, F. This is the one you're looking for, R, R, E, F. And on my TI-83, that is labeled as B. you got to go through the numbers 1 through 0, because it gives 0 as the last one, and then A and then B. So it's R, R, E, F. There is one that is just one R. Um, you want the second one. And so we're going to hit that button, hit enter, and it'll put that on your home screen. And then you're going to hit second matrix again. And you've got all your matrices there. And you'll see that A has a three by four matrix in it. You hit enter. And so now it'll say REF parenthesis matrix A. When you hit enter on that, it will row reduce echelon form your matrix. And you'll see this on your screen and it gives us a negative one here, a two and a negative four. And so what that means is that my ordered triplet, because remember we got an X, Y, and a Z, is negative one, two, and negative four. And so when we think about the coordinate space, and it's really hard to describe over video or describe just drawing a picture, but what our coordinate plane will look like is this. So we've got our traditional X and Y here. Um, and, and depending on what context you're in, we'll switch where the X, Y, and Z are. Um, but you have three planes, and so think about it this way. So the flat plane, if you think about like the floor, the two walls would be X and Y. So think about like the back corner of the room or the front corner of the room, and call that your origin point. And then, you know, going to the right would be going positive, going to the left would be negative, and going through the wall is negative and coming towards you is positive. Again, Thinking about your axes going positive and negative. But we've got a third dimension, right? We're not just two-dimensional things. Don't go back to, you know, um, the uh, the feelings movie. Oh, my goodness, I can't even think of it right now. Um, you know, where you got joy and sadness and anger and all them. Um, it'll come to me later, and you'll probably tell me in the comments. Um, but then the third axis is Z, right? And so we have X, we have Y, we Z. We have, we have three dimensions in our world. Um, and so we can find that point. And so if this was negative one, two, and negative four, it'd be back on the x-axis, going right on the y-axis here, and then it'd actually be below the floor, right? Because we're at negative four, and depends on our units of where we would be. Um, and again, like I said, that's how they determine like where something is in space. Even when you think about our latitude and longitude system. You know, it's a two-dimensional representation of a 3D world. Your third dimension would be altitude. So you have your latitude and longitude defined in positives and negatives for north, south, or east and west, but you'd also have your altitude either above sea level or below sea level. And so we could talk about our position here at school with, you know, what our latitude and longitude is in the same idea. And so matrices is a really good way, again, talking ACT, SAT here, if you're given a matrix problem and you need to get the solution, or if you're given a systems problem, even two variable systems can be done this way. It's a quick way to plug it in with your coefficients, which are constants in standard form, that's the key, it's gotta be in standard form, and then plug it in, do your reduce on form, it gives you the answer. Um, and it will save you a lot of time on those tests. All right, so we've got two others here. Um, we're going to look at these two real quick. And again, we're looking at if it has no solution or infinite many solutions. And remember the key to those type problems is that we're looking for when we either get something that is not true, that would give us no solution, or we get something that is a true statement, like a number equals a number, the same number, um, and that would give us infinite many solutions. And, and but what that means in three dimensions can mean different things. Because sometimes what that means, depending on the variables that we're dealing with, is we've got a single line somewhere in space. But what that could also mean is that we're dealing with a plane in space. So we're dealing with some plane that cuts across our coordinate plane. So it might not be the flat x, y plane. It might be some sheet that cuts across all our axes at some point. 
And so when we solve this system, again, matrices, I love matrices. I, I will tell you that this will be your lifesaver for this lesson today. If you have a graphing calculator, this is going to save you so much time. The only thing I ask you in your assignment is that you show setting up the initial matrix and show the resulting matrix, because that will show me that you have actually done the work for this. And so let's look at what this results to. What you'll see is our matrix actually doesn't come out to this. What it comes out to is we get this third one that gets a zero here, and we've got actually this would be negative two-thirds in for the z here, and we've got this negative five-thirds in for the z here. And then when we go over to the right, we've got a one, a three, and a zero. And we so we end up with a zero row. And what that means is that this function is really x minus two-thirds z is equal to one, and y minus five-thirds z is equal to three. And so we end up with a system that doesn't define us a C or a Z point. It means is that we end up with a plane in the coordinate plane, right? Because this is a two variable line in coordinate plane. So this would be a line that would eventually cross the X and Z axis. Remember what we talked about the other day, right? This would be a line that crosses the Y and the Z. And so it's defining two lines that are intersecting like this. Um, and it defines what that plane will be. Um, again, those lines may or may not intersect, just depends on slopes through the plane. Um, and again, what axes it'll cross. This one will only cross the X and the Z, this one will only cross Y and Z, and so it gives us a plane that'll cross all three. So when we look at a second example here, and we draw out our matrix, three, negative one, negative two, and four, six, negative two, negative four, and 11, 9, negative 3, negative 6, and 12. What we see here, if you see the pattern, I'm going to show you something here real quick. On the previous example, if we go back up real quick, do you see how this line and this line, line 1 and line 3, you could take line 1 and multiply it by 3. It's the same line, right? So we've got a, a, a dependent line in there between those two. Well, if we look at this one, we get that this one could be multiplied by two to get this line, right? But look at the numbers at the end. Are they going to do what they're supposed to do? The four multiplied by three would give you 12, not 11. Same thing down here, or sorry, times two would give you eight, not 11. And then down here, times by three would give you the right number. So we've got an issue of consistency. So when we go to our matrix and we calculate it out, what we're going to get is 1, and then negative 1 third, and then our third number out here is negative 2 thirds, and then we get 0 out here. But then our other lines, we come out to 0, 0, 0, and 1, and then 0, 0, 0, and 0. And so the key is this when you're looking at your matrix. The key is that I've got a line of zeros, but at the very end I've got something that's not 0. Because if I have 0x and 0y and 0z, it better equal 0 because I have nothing going on, which the bottom line's okay. It's this middle line that's not. And that tells me that this system has no solution. So again, if I end up with a line that has all zeros and then something that is not 0, with our calculator reducing, it'll, it will be a 1. But if we get that, we get no solution. But if we get a line where I get all zeros and a zero and everything else is good, where I don't have all zeros and the non-zero, then we have a system of infinitely many solutions. All right, so let's look at our last example. We're going to go real world here for a minute. I'm going to skip example C. Let's look at this problem. There are 80,250 seats at williams Bryce Stadium. This is the actual number of seats at williams Bryce. I looked that up. For a particular event, tickets are sold uh, for the upper level for $20, the middle level for $30, and the bottom level for $40 each. I just made up those numbers for this event. The number of seats in the middle and bottom levels together equal the number of seats in the upper level. I don't know if that's true, but again, for simplicity of this problem, that's why I designed it that way. If all of the seats are sold for the event, the total revenue is $2.2 million. How many seats are there in each level, and does your answer seem reasonable and explain? And so we could set up a 
system. So let's set up some equations, right? So there's 80,250 seats between the upper, middle, and bottom level, and that's the variables we'll use. So U plus M plus B is equal to 80,250. Our second equation deals with cost, and so we're going to see that the upper level for 20, the middle level for 30, and the lower level for 40. So 20U plus 30M plus 40B is equal to $2.2 million. Make sure you don't put 2.2, but actually write out 2,200,000 um, there. Our third equation comes in the form of this. And it's important to note that three variable systems must have at least three equations because that's what it takes to define a single point in the system. Um, if we don't have three equations with three variables, we end up with just a plane like we saw with the infinitely many solutions problem. And so the third equation comes from this sentence right here that I'm highlighting in green. It says that the number of seats in the middle and bottom levels together equal the number of seats in the upper level. And so how we're going to write that is that M plus B is equal to U. Now, if we wanted to solve this through substitution, I could take this and plug it into the U here and plug it into the U here. And now I'm at a two variable, two equation system, and that would be okay. Um, but we've let the matrices out of the bag, so let's do matrices. But remember what I said, it's got to be in standard form. So before we even plug into our matrix, I've got to convert this. I've got to subtract the U across the equal sign so that the U, the M, and the B are all on the same side, and I've got a constant on the other. And so this is going to be negative U plus M plus B is equal to zero. That's my third equation. And so as we plug into our matrix, we're going to get one, one, one for U, M, and B, and then 80,250. And then I'm going to get 20, 30, and 40, for 2,200,000, put your commas in the right spots. And then our last one is negative one, one, and one, and zero. And so remember, we're gonna do that R, R, E, F, matrix A, again, make sure you're using that matrix menu. And so when we get that, we're gonna get one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, and the numbers at the end give us 40,125, 20,750 and 19,375. And so what that tells us is that there are 40,125 upper level seats. There are 20,750 middle level seats. And there are 19,375 lower level seats. Now we can check a couple things. We know that um, we were told that the middle and upper, uh, middle and lower levels had to add to the upper level. And so 20,000, 19,000, that's 39. But we see here seven and three would give us a zero. That's gonna give us a one to carry. So this does carry over to 40,125. So that part verifies. Um, we could plug into the other two equations and solve that as well um, to double check our answer completely. But the whole point of using a calculator is that if you type things in right, you get right answers, if you, as long as you know what you're typing in first. And so that's where we're going to stop here. Um, word of the day here, kind of been leading them to the end, but the word of the day is systems. Again, word of the day is systems. Um, so again, if you got questions, ask, you know what you got to do, um, but use your calculator wisely on this lesson because that's going to be the big thing. If you know how to use your calculator or if you need help using your calculator and how to do this, um, it makes these problems really, really easy and you don't have to do all this by hand. Um, hope you have a good one. Bye.